Yes, we are recording uh, to Anne Sofiane. Okay. Uh, I think I have to uh, allow me to share the the screen. I'm not uh, I'm not allowed to to share my screen at the moment. Okay. Same for Sofiane later on. I think. He... Can you can you check now? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. All right, then I had to okay. Then I have to uh, come back to the meeting after we start Zoom to be able to share my screen. So see you in a in a few seconds. Sorry. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Let's see, I can share my screen now. I think you can all see my screen. Yes. Yes. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick introduction to, to LabLabby, uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Sofiane will, uh, will carry on with uh, a Telco Cloud uh, discussion uh, and will complete with, uh, with a demo uh, after that. Um, so, so LabLabby, we are a hands-on training platform, so we're a SaaS solution, and really, we, you know, uh, as you probably uh, discussed with Karim in the, in the first few sessions, we are really here. Uh, hopefully to uh, to close the gap, uh, you know, for this transformation that the telecom industry uh, face, going from uh, you know a vendor for all of you who are in vendor uh, or operators, you, you know this model into a more uh, cloud model, and this represents a huge challenge for many companies on the operator side, on the vendor side, on all the different uh, actors in this industry. Uh, that's where we. We came uh, into the picture with our uh, platform uh, to try to, uh, you know, uh, bring new skills to engineers who are already uh, in the industry. People are wanting to join the industry. Uh, it's really, uh, I think, we have a huge potential uh, in this uh, and huge challenge uh, in front of us in this uh, in this regards. So, regarding what we uh, we, we we offer. So really, we try to have a, a complete view, you know, in terms of uh, who uh, who can use, uh, who needs to uh, upgrade their skills. It's really about new people onboarding, you know, and new engineers, uh, people who who join this industry. Uh, we also target uh, people who are already in this industry who wants to get uh, more professional, more skills, uh, more knowledge uh, into that. So we are talking about upskilling. You know, many of you are already expert in, in, in the domain, in your domain, and you're trying to get into uh, to complete your knowledge with uh, new uh, new skills around uh, the cloud. And of course, uh, people who come from different uh, industry, different background, uh, they, they have to get new skills uh, and we, we target to provide training for them as well uh, as part of a risk, uh, risk killing uh, program. So as I mentioned uh, in the introduction, we are uh, a platform. We are a SaaS hands-on training platform, meaning uh, it's all on the internet. You don't have to install anything. Uh, but we, we, there are three things we, we like to put forward. So of course, we do provide the training. So that's where you see the knowledge is important. The content of uh, our trainings, you know, they'll have theoretically uh, theoretical explanation. You have diagram, you have... Uh, uh, 
uh, use cases so that people uh, understand uh, the context of the training. Uh, what is more important is where we feel we make uh, a strong difference is about being able to practice. Uh, you know, if this is a doing part, uh, you will see all our training uh, include uh, a dedicated lab so all the learners can practice, they can then do exercise, they can experiment uh, by themselves, which we feel is the best way, uh, you know, to, uh, to understand and then to retain the knowledge uh, you acquire through a training. Finally, uh, even though it's a digital uh, platform we, we provide, uh, we know it's important for uh, all the learners, everybody, you know, to not to be alone. So we do provide coaching. Uh, everybody can access our support. The support will be able to answer any question uh, the student have. It's really complete experience to be uh, to be uh, going through uh, Lab Labby uh, and never being alone. Uh, because we all know maybe uh, the model of some other platform where it's really uh, pick and choose or you know you can you can watch many videos but if you cannot ask questions get access to some expert as well uh, like Karim is doing uh, through his program uh, we feel this is a key benefit as well a, a very important for uh, mastering a new um, a new competence Finally, so okay, I'll just put quickly, but uh, today, of course, we will want to uh, focus on Telco Cloud. Uh, this is where we're coming from. Myself, I come from the telecom industry, uh, working as well for vendors uh, or operators. Uh, same way, Sofiane as well is a long experience with within operators. So this is where we feel, you know, Telco Cloud, Telco, this is our uh, main focus. But of course, there are other areas which are uh, also important. Uh, and you see through our catalog, we, we touch that with enterprise, of course, security and networking. So, uh, Sofiane, I'll let you go through, uh, maybe we'll have uh, open discussion, you know, we'll, we'll, Sofiane will do some explanation, but I think the idea is to have interaction with you. So feel free to uh, uh, interact with us, ask questions. Uh, that's the best way so that is uh, fruitful for everyone uh, when we, we, we participate in, in such a program. Uh, regarding Lab Lab B, I mean, you'll have this, uh, this slide, so feel free again to get in touch with us if you have specific questions as individual or for your corporate, we'll be happy to assist. Um, so unless you have specific questions on this short introduction, uh, I propose Sofian uh, to, to carry on. Yes, gladly. No problem. Um, anybody want to jump in? If you have any questions, uh, uh, Sofiane, I have, I have a question in the. Uh, please, uh, can you? Yeah, so you, you usually you, you provide your offerings or you target enterprises or also you're working with individuals. I mean, can can an individual? Uh... Ah, it's a good question. So today, yeah. today we are in a B two B model. So we, we work with corporate. We are looking at uh, B2C, so to work with individuals. So if, if among you individuals uh, are interested uh, as a personal, uh, we do work with partners. So for instance, we work with TIP Academy, who, who can uh, provide us our services to individuals. But we don't do it directly just yet. But if you get in touch with us, I already said yes, and I mean it, because we are looking at this, uh, this aspect uh, very shortly. We'll, we'll, we'll launch some program. So, uh, it should be uh, coming to you very soon for those who are really eager to uh, to get uh, Lab Labby experience. Great, Thank, thanks, Tuan. Uh, we have a question on the chat, Tuan. Uh, so, uh, Carlo is saying, hi, Carlo. Uh, general question, are you targeting just core? How about multi-access edge computing, open RAN, and traditional RAN? I believe this is a question better answered with uh, a view of our catalog. I can uh, go back. Uh... Yeah. You're welcome, Carlo. No problem. So, as as you can see on the uh, on the slide that's uh, currently showing, uh, we have our labs uh, divided into different fields and topics. So for example, one field for us is Telco Cloud, Telco Enterprise, Industry 4.0, Networking and Security. And as for the topics we have within, for example, Telco, uh, we have labs in the 5G. So we have 
core labs, run labs, and end-to-end -end labs. Uh, the uh, the one that you are seeing right here, 5G fundamentals, is the one I'm going to demo later on. And there is also another one, which is 5G standalone network, uh, which is uh, about the, uh, the, um, the, the the level intermediate in order to uh, to acquire more skills, uh, more hands-on uh, practice and, and more uh, interactions with your core network. So we have uh, we have the the topics, we have the fields, we have levels, as you guessed, uh, beginner, introductory level for everyone, really, uh, with the use cases that talk hopefully to everybody, uh, whether uh, it's uh, on the core, on the RAN, or something else. And uh, we have also on the intermediate where we try to really dive in and get, uh, uh, for example, uh, further into uh, a given topic. So I say uh, one question from Mohammed. Hi, Mohammed. Isn't 5G slicing part of Telco instead of Telco Cloud since it's more about 5G SA functions? That's a very good question. So um, what you are seeing on the left, Telco Cloud and 5G slicing for private networks, is a lab that focuses on how do you host private networks, how you enable it with NFV, how you do it using Kubernetes, and then how to implement slicing uh, for uh, industry or for different use cases that we explain in the lab. So what uh, what really matters for us here is uh, that people find this lab useful. That's always the focus. So the classification in Teco Cloud, it's because the, the, the themes, it's a mix of themes where you are going to find infrastructure, where you are going to find the uh, 5G and slicing. But it's not a lab about 5G. It's not about a lab where you are going to understand the protocols and the core flows. That's done within the telco uh, family of labs, 5G fundamentals or standalone network. So this is what explains the classification. But if you come to us with a need, meaning you tell us, hey, guys, uh, um, today we are going to tackle certain uh, topic within uh, our company. And uh, these are the major challenges that we are facing currently. So Tuan and myself, probably Tuan, uh, will, uh, will advise you better um, based on the, the topics that you are going to bring on with uh, the labs that we have that could answer that need. Yeah, so, we, we didn't go into the detail, but if you go to our website, there'll be our catalog is uh, visible there. You'll have uh, more detail on each one of these uh, trainings. Uh, you will see actually another category we haven't mentioned, but we'll start to introduce vendor vendor labs. So for instance, we, we do work with Amarisoft, and then we, have, we created a training based on that technology, which is more run oriented, more on the 5G uh, NSA and on the radio side. But you'll get more explanation about some of the use cases which are uh, tackled in in the in the trainings. So indeed, sometimes the uh, frontier can be a little bit blurred, you know, telco cloud telco. Uh, but normally, from our perspective, on the telco cloud, it is going to be more related to the infrastructure. The topics will be more uh, infrastructure related uh, than ac the actual telecom uh, protocols and uh, and so on. Uh, and just to mention, maybe so uh, in our approach, so we touched a bit. Sofia mentioned it, but so we do have this uh, catalog, and this is getting. You know, uh, we add more and more every uh, every month. Is really uh, our target to uh, to have more trainings. Uh, but when we do work in a corporate uh, customer, uh, we do as well. Uh, we are open to you know to to work on specific needs. So maybe some some companies have you know specific project which require specific training that as well we are open to discuss uh, creating this sort of training uh, on demand with the with our customers there is a second question by mohammed um, in the telco domain the related functions are they based on a specific vendor or is it more open source and the latter mohammed is the answer uh, what we do at lab lab B for our catalog is vendor agnostic what it means is that when you come to us for a 5g lab you are going to get hands-on experience with 5G, not with a given vendor. It means you are going to receive a training on the call flows, on the APIs, on the end-to-end -end procedures, on monitoring, etc. For us, we are going to use open source in order to deliver the, the content and the technology that will uh, help you upskill in that domain. For you, you are going to get a lab 
which is managed by LabLab with support and with a technical team behind. You are just going to uh, uh, play with the procedures, do the challenges, explore on your own. If you are interested in certain use cases that we didn't cover, that's fine by us, no problem at all. On the contrary, we welcome it. And, um, and all of that is based on open source. And as Tuan said earlier, we have a vendor program. What it means is that if you are interested in a certain vendor, we are starting to deliver some of our trainings with vendors backed uh, into the technology that we provide in the lab. One concrete example for you guys could be Amarisoft, uh, which is uh, a vendor uh, that is uh, really ha heads on on, uh, on the software and everything software. So basically 100% uh, compliant with the approach that we try to, to deliver at LabLab so we have one uh, of our labs for uh, uh, Amisoft, another one with uh, Red Hat, uh, uh, Red Hat OpenShift, and uh, we have more coming up. So, uh, so no, no, no issues there. What we do is open source, Mohammed. So, Carlo, second question: uh, How about particular ecosystem like Red Hat, AWS, GCP, Azure, or is neutral environment? What we do is vendor agnostic, as I said to uh, Mohammed, and uh, my answer to you, Carlo, is also cloud agnostic. What it means is that we try to deliver training unless we mention the, the training to be about uh, something hosted on AWS, like 5G as a service or something like that. We do it cloud agnostic. It means you are going to find virtual machines. We are going to speak about KMU or KVM or, or something like that. You are going to find containers be it Docker, uh, Creo, or something else, Podman, or anything else. You are going to find orchestration with Kubernetes or maybe private infrastructure with OpenStack. All of these are going to be cloud agnostic, meaning the way we deploy them, it is today on AWS, it was in the past on over OVH, and it could be in the future over GCP or maybe Azure. Ideally, you would tell the difference, and this is how, the way we deliver it, but for certain labs, uh, if we are going to target certain technology based, for example, on client's demand or a pedagogical need or something like that, uh, we are going to mention it by name and we are going to explain it to you how to use it. So unless we do that, it's going to be to be vendor agnostic, cloud agnostic. You're welcome. Welcome, Mohammed and Kalu. I think... Uh... Is there no, let's see another question, but I think your, your presentation maybe hopefully will okay. trigger some more questions as well, some interesting discussion. Gladly. Thanks everyone for the questions so far and uh, we'll go into the topic of the day, I think. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for the warm-up. It was a, a good um, first set of um, questions. An, uh, yeah, indeed. We didn't. But yes, uh, we see the self-paced uh, training question from Ivan. Self-paced okay. training. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, all all online. Okay, excellent. So uh, I believe what I'm going to say here in this presentation uh, is familiar to you guys. I'm I'm, I'm sure most of you guys have already um, um, faced the challenges that I'm going to speak about, but be it in your companies uh, or. Uh, or in your uh, uh, circle, uh, doing networking, going to, to, to meetups or conferences, you have seen the topics that I'm going to mention. So uh, hopefully what we are going to do today uh, is going to browse uh, generally about the topics, try and get a few uh, um, key messages, and then move on to the demo, uh, hopefully with uh, questions for, from you guys uh, uh, around the field. Uh, around the, the the bridge uh to 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 get the thing interactive uh so yeah so let's start by by saying a few words about 5g most of you uh ladies and gentlemen are are of course familiar with the topic uh this is something uh that has been uh, around for a few years now uh and and now what we know uh, about 5g is is that uh, the, the ambition at the beginning was to deliver 5G with three by default slices, right? The slices would be enhanced MBB at the top of the triangle here. URLC for industries in general and massive 
machine type communications, MMTC, for let's say an evolution of um, um, IoT, MB IoT or uh, LTM in 4G to cover the needs for IoT machines. What we know now is that the ambition first was that to deliver these slices by default, we needed the 5G standalone version to, to come sooner than it, it, it has been rolled out finally by the, the operators with the issues that we know, the challenges that we're facing the operators in order to do that. Uh, we, we reverted to a, a more traditional solution, which is evolutive. So the evolution was we delivered 5G through 5G non-standalone with a 4G core network. So some of the promises that were initially, uh, um, I mean, um, promised the, 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 the some of the the uh, the innovations that were promised by 5G at first were not delivered uh, soon uh, enough for the users to get the hype and uh, and the uh, and the enthusiasm that we 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 here have. Uh, as passionate and uh, professional of this uh, domain. So what I wanted to say here is that on this slide, in a triangle, you see a summary of what 5G can deliver. If we are focusing on certain KPIs, we are going to deliver one slice or the other. So for example, the URL let's see in red, uh, which is targeting things like augmented reali reality, uh, mobile robots, motion control, remote control, um, requires high reliability, ultra low latency, and high availability. This kind of challenges today are better tackled with the separation of control plane and user plane, where the user plane would be closer to the edge, the closest possible to, for example, um, a, 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 an automation warehouse where you are going to find a uh, uh, something in an assembly line, for example, reliant on something that is really highly reliable, ultra low latency. So in order to deliver that, the operators are doing uh, are doing the deployments where they separate the control plane and user plane and get the user plane as close as possible to the industries that require this. So this is one something that is uh, fairly new. And it is ha it has been also covered by things like private 5G. Uh, which is something that is coming in full force uh, in the industry, and it is really regarded as something very important for the industry else to have. The enhanced e MBB, uh, which is uh, enhanced mobile broadband, is targeting more um, higher bandwidth, uh, large data volumes, uh, best effort in the low latency. And these kind of use cases is, you can view it as 4G, but better, right? Uh, it targets uh, things like broadcasting, media delivery, online gaming, something that you and I can use, can benefit from. And anyone who is not familiar with the 5G, not an industrial, but requires, let's say, uh, things uh, that is uh, better than 4G currently. What you see on the bottom left is the, the what happens when the KPIs are tuned down to parameters that cover better the IoT use cases, which are low cost devices, extreme coverage, and long device battery life, which means protocols that are optimized to enhance and to uh, and to uh, prolong the, the, the device battery life. So things like actuators, sensors, and trackers could benefit from these uh, deployments of 5G. And this is refreshing uh, when we come from 4G because um, as you remember it in release eight and release 10, IoT wasn't really a first class citizen of the standard, right? It was later, um, it came later uh, in release 14 with LTEM and NBIoT, uh, things like that, these kind of protocols. And also if you remember, there were challenges back then uh, uh, like Sigfox and LoRa, uh, that today are really struggling in terms of clientele, but 5G tried to tackle this uh, IoT challenge um, heads on and uh, as a first class citizen of the technology. So these three slices could be, of course, customized, right? They could be customized to any, um, to the benefit of any industry. For example, let's say if we had an automotive 
uh, use case which requires a bit of the good things in the uh, and the in the MMTC slice and a bit of the KPIs that are parameterized like it is in the uh, ULLC, then a, a client like that, which expresses um, the challenges and the requirements of the slice like that, would be we, we would be as operators capable of serving this kind of uh, of slice thanks to the ultra customization of 5G. So that was made possible thanks to an architecture made of connected services, which means that rather than deploying appliances which are uh, not viewed as uh, the representation of agility nowadays, we want things that to be more agile, we want uh, things to be, if possible, defined by software, because that means providing new features means rolling out new versions of softwares, which of course, thanks to agility, CICD, and this kind of automations will go much faster than rolling out a set of appliances, hardware appliances, meaning in, uh, in a lot of vendors, and of course, much more cost efficient. So uh, the decision that was made by the standardization bodies, of course, collab in collaboration with the vendors and the operators, was to make the core network architecture software-based and the communication between them would be made with HTTP APIs. That's really a departure from traditional kind of protocols that we have uh, in 4G, for instance. Slicing, as I said, we, we talked about the slices by default. We also have customized slicing, uh, which is possible in 5G, uh, thanks to uh, things like GSMA Nest templates and such. Uh, and we have, of course, the need for 5G orchestration because um, delivering these slices end to end requires machinery uh, that would be uh, that would be tackle the uh, reorganization of some um, networking assets, a reconfiguration of some network services or core services and such end to end. All of this requires orchestration because obviously the actions would be uh, done one after the other uh, or in parallel depending on the constraints, etc and need to accommodate the other slices that we already deployed. So all of this needs like an intelligent mind behind it uh, in order to uh, to deliver this kind of uh, goodness in the network without interfering with day-to-day -day operations. So all of this, of course, is going to happen thanks to a progressive transformation. And uh, because, because of all of these uh, radical changes uh, that were defined in the in the standard for 5G standalone core network. 5G standalone core network, we can say it right on, it is demanding. Demanding it means requires advanced virtualization, requires cloud native infrastructure, requires change in the ways we operate the networks, meaning more agility, and also could only be brought on to the network if we imagine the deployment as an incremental evolution of 4G, that incremental change has been called 5G NSA, non-standalone core. And in the configurations that you see below, option three, for example, that you see right here, this option three uh, is, for example, something that operators deploy where they could benefit from the goodness that has been brought by G Node Bs with the new radio while also maintaining the core network of 4G in an advanced version of it, of course, with the current uh, topology uh, that is uh, based on inode Bs and such. So this is a good option to deploy, uh, for instance, 4G, while 5G, sorry, while also maintaining an existing 4G network. So the set of uh, network uh, functions that are required in these cases uh, is uh, what the most of the operators have chosen to deploy. Some other operators deployed, for instance, uh, option seven, uh, which is more greenfield approach. In this greenfield approach, you, you don't have a deployment uh, that is based on 4G. You don't have the constraint of being retro compatible, for instance. You want to cover your users with 4G and 5G. You decide to go right on from day one with 5G core network, and then cover your users with inode B. This option here 
is more suited for those kind of operators. We are thinking, for example, of uh, uh, guys like uh, uh, Rakuten and such. So uh, th this uh, would be uh, would mean that you can uh, deploy your 5G and also cover your users in other areas in 4G. Um, okay, uh, let me just remove these. Uh, okay. Okay. So um, what I say here is if 5G, then cloud. So th this advanced virtualization that I have talked about, the cloud native uh, services that we need to deploy, all of this happen in cloud te technologies, right? So it happens in cloud infrastructures to be more accurate. So on cloud infrastructures, such as the one that you are seeing below, it could be private, it could be public, you can enable these services with technologies such as Docker, OpenStack, uh, Kubernetes, and and uh, and software defined network and why and the, and the likes. So these kind of technologies you can put them in motion in order to create your own private cloud and support the services that that are, for example, five G or four G. Amazon, as the, the example that is put below has done multiple uh, multiple uh, communications, multiple PR uh, operations where they talked about how they supported um, in, 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 uh, in succession 4G core network uh, that was uh, back in 2018, how they supported 5G core network with uh, affirmed networks and uh, later on with uh, um, with a company uh, with which of which the name I forgot uh, just right now. Uh, Azure later on has also communicated with Affium Networks before acquiring them that they, they could uh, also support 5G in the cloud. So all of these operators see this telco industry with the advent of 5G that is a domain that could uh, benefit them and on which they could scale uh, their operations. They could cover them as they covered before that banking, healthcare, and other domains. So with the virtualization and with the software defined everything that is baked within the 5G standard, there is no reason why these um, cloud operators, uh, cloud service providers in general, Azure, GCP, and, uh, and AWS, for instance, couldn't themselves provide these kind of services, which is the case. Namely, uh, we can mention the um, Amazon 5G as a service, uh, we can uh, name also Azure for operators and a bunch of uh, other services that are provided within the GCP catalog. So these cloud operators, uh, cloud service um, operators, these hyperscalers are also interested in providing telco services. From the other hand, are the telco operators and the traditional actors in this field interested in this as well? Well, yes, they are interested. Why? Because it means for them new ways of operating the technology. It means for them more agility to provide more new features to the network without uh, roll without the costly, very costly rollouts uh, that happen every ten years, etc. So all of this is interesting to both parties. So we can summarize that to enablers, technical enablers, and new actors in the field. So uh, there are for few examples out there. Uh, I mentioned Rakuten before. I can also mention Dish, uh, and I'm sure other operators out there are doing uh, are doing uh, great by combining uh, these two technologies in uh, something called today Telco Cloud. So as professionals of this field, we are witnessing this change, right? So we are witnessing this change and noting that the skills that are required in these fields need training. The infrastructure that we are going to operate needs best practices. And all of this cannot be done in just one rollout. It needs to be done in iteration. This is the, uh, this is the, the example of uh, 5G non-standalone before the 5G standalone. Uh, this is the example of rolling out 4G and then connecting it with a 5G radio and then doing both uh, before moving on. Uh, this is the example of doing 2G, 3G, 4G, and then 
I mean, progressively eliminating 2G because of the lack of security, replacing it with something else. This evolution of the technology, this iteration uh, and providing new features to the users that could benefit everybody is known to the operators and it is baked within the, the DNA. So this is how we prepare for this telco cloud as well. What kind of skills and challenges are waiting for us? In terms of field, in terms of skills, and in terms of needs, this table could summarize some of these uh, skills and challenges that are waiting for us. For instance, if I take an example in the system engineering side, you have seen that uh, 5G requires virtualization and cloudification and cloud nativeness and whatnot. We require more skills like Linux automation monitoring, things that were reserved to other roles IT roles, traditional IT roles in the operator side now are coming to uh, to to other profiles like uh, we are witnessing within Blah Blah B, um, like five G architects, uh, project managers now are requesting from us uh, a tech cloud learning path where they will see quickly one before the uh, one after the other Linux uh, containers and CI/CD. So these are the new kind of skills that anybody really uh, needs to, to have uh, in order to, to better understand how they could provide uh, these services. And of course, the needs can be uh, at different levels. For example, if you are really operational, you need system engineering to be an advanced level, of course, because of all of these advanced topics that are, are required. Um, so you need the training to be there. and. And in general, uh, the industry is aware of that. And uh, in different polls, I'm just mentioning one here, uh, the, the professionals of the field mention each time the same thing, that uh, they have difficulty finding qualified candidates to bring in new hires. Uh, the resources are, third-party resources are expensive. The salary expectations are too high, of course, because the kind of profiles that you are going to combine these two fields are senior in general. so. They are not going to apply for junior jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So the industry is witnessing this change to be uh, to be precise. So that's the right cue for me to uh, to do uh, the demo. I propose I show you some um, some um, uh, some challenges on uh, Lablabi platform before I uh, I respond to some of the questions on the chat and please uh, keep them uh, coming. Uh, I'm going to uh, address them as I finish with Tuan, of course, with the help of Tuan. So hopefully you see my screen right now on the uh, LabLab dashboard platform. Cool. So yeah, so I'm connected right now as a student. Uh, so in this uh, view, uh, you are seeing me connected uh, with uh, a student profile on the LabLab platform. Uh, on the dashboard right here, you are seeing the labs that are deployed, the learning paths that are deployed, and the skill tests, of course, also that we have. So these are three different products. Today, we are just going to see uh, the labs pro product. But of course, if you are curious about the rest, then uh, no uh, problem from my side or from uh, Tuan's side to answer any uh, question you might have. So on this platform, what we, we baked inside is a catalog like you have seen on the website, composed of topics, fields, and decomposed into levels. So inside, uh, for example, the Telco Cloud field, you are going to have um, Telco Cloud orchestration with Kubernetes, that's uh, for Telco use case. NFV unleashed for 5G slicing, like the one we mentioned before with Mohammed, uh, Telco containers with Docker, etc. So these kind of um, labs you are going to to touch on the infrastructure, and you are going to have your Telco uh, workload on top of an infrastructure, just like you would have in a Telco cloud deployed in any operator out there. Uh, GitOps is one of the latest labs to come in this category, but we also have. Uh, OpenStack for telcos and CI/CD as well. In the other field, which is telco, the first we really uh, bootstarted and the uh, the late motive of LabLab is this category where where we we are covering things like 5G, 4G, Open RAN, 
IMS and uh, at different levels, really, beginner, intermediate, etc. So this is one of the, the most uh, covered categories uh, right now in, in Lab Lab B. And labs, more labs are coming up uh, as we speak. Uh, every every month, uh, more labs come and populate the, the catalog in any of the categories based on the user demand. So today I chose to illustrate uh, with you guys um, 5G and uh, Open RAN. Um, my understanding is that these are the topics that uh, interest you the most. But uh, of course, if, if you have anything else that you want to see, uh, no worries, just uh, tell me and uh, I will make sure to cover it as well. So I picked the 5G beginner just to see the kind of, um, the kind of uh, um, challenges that we have in this level and how we, we try to interact with uh, in, in the intermediate level, how we try to interact more with the technology. So in the beginner level, what we do uh, is we have uh, on the right here uh, a table of content, which is uh, composed of challenges. On challenge one, we are going to do a review of mobile architectures. So we are going to explain really the fundamental stuff about uh, the mobile networks. What is a cell? What is a cell tower? What is uh, an antenna? How it looks like in um, in the field? Explain the evolution of the technology from uh, uh, technologies uh, back in the eighties, uh, where uh, we have uh, where we had uh, Motorola's and Radiocom and things like that, uh, and we we see the evolution uh, to things like uh, we have uh, today. Before diving in to um, diving into the actual stuff. The actual stuff here is, for example, in challenge two, where we explain the deployment, we are going into a challenge, like this car to radio challenge, where we are going to request the learner to connect to the lab environment. This is what I'm doing now, clicking on the connect to lab button. And when I connect to the lab, when I click to the button, what I what happened was I was instantly connected to my private instance in the cloud, bake in, uh, with, with baked in 5G technology, uh, the, the core network is open source, and implementation of the challenges that we explain here. So to uh, I anticipate some of the questions, but this is also a callback to uh, Carlo and Mohammed's questions. The technology inside is open source. Uh, from time to time, we pick free 5GC. From in other times, we pick open 5GS. In the cloud, in this case, it's AWS. It could be GCP or OVH, as I said before. We are cloud agnostic. Nothing you see here for now says AWS, and it doesn't require you to put your credit card anywhere. So for now, we are uh, we are just practicing within the immersive view of this Lab Lab B uh, platform. And the other question is, we did the implementation and we check uh, the evolution of the learner inside the environment as they are doing the challenges. So what happens here is, for example, here, we are instructed to go onto the folder challenge two and to click on the understand cattle radio uh, challenge. If I want this view to be full screen, of course I can. So I just click on this arrow right here, and I have it in the comfort of my browser, full screen, and I have the same view as before, just maxed out to take full advantage of your, uh, of your uh, environment. And then inside, for now, we are interacting with the uh, Cartoon Radio platform. And then on the challenge, what we are going to say is, now let's dive into a deployment inside the Paris Charles de Gaulle airport. Let's have a look inside. And in order to do that, let's click on this UMA cartoon radio. UMA is a type of cellular coverage that we explained here. UMA stands for urban macro. And it means inside you are going to find something that is a macro covering a large environment. So inside this challenge, we are instructing the learner to go inside the UMA car to radio to be teleported inside this airport and to find a lot of points of interest right here. And these points of interest, all of them are types of antennas 
that are explained right here. And each antenna here is explained and detailed in terms of frequency band, in terms of service, in terms of um, of reference level for the uh, radiation, etc. So all of this is explained directly into something uh, real world. So these deployments are real world. They are really inside the Charles de Gaulle airport. So why do we do this? We do this at the beginner level to explain to the engineer who is taking this uh, challenge, look at the field, this is how it looks like. And, and what we explain here is the important parameters that they have to look at. For example, the, uh, the height at which the antenna has been placed, the orientation of the uh, antenna's head, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these are explained and we also illustrate heavily on the, on the lab uh, with GIFs and with um, images that are illustrated just to make the thing really pedagogical and explained right for the, for the people to, to get the, the fundamentals really. Each end of challenge is uh, finalized with a quiz and this quiz allow us to uh, make sure that uh, what has been explained inside this challenge is really acquired by the learner. We have more types of challenges. We have a challenge where we try to uh, build a network packet to send it into the wire, capture it with Wireshark and analyze it. And this is to, to make sure that in the next steps, when we are going to analyze really the 5G NR protocol stack and the NGAP protocol, we make sure in the challenge tree that the learner, the student, is really uh, has this uh, ability to understand what is a Wireshark filter, how to capture traffic and how to analyze a protocol before diving into the, uh, the the challenge itself. You are going to be able to interact with the network elements, all of them. So for instance, here in this challenge, we are instructing you to interact with uh, the AMF, for, exa for example. And when doing so, you are going to be able to launch, to, to start the uh, capture with Wireshark, start the scenario of UE registration inside your own lab, and capture it in Wireshark and then analyze it after that. And all of that without installing anything on your computer. All of this is going to happen in the browser, including the Wireshark view, which is also uh, something that we brought on uh, into the, the, uh, the, uh, the browser itself, as you can see on my screen as well. So this is the live capture of the ETH interface inside the lab that I am uh, illustrating right, right now. So this is really everything within the browser. This is the uh, the, the motto of LabLab. We we try to to give you the uh, the experience and the challenges in order to uh, to uh, explore the environment, explore the lab, learn the protocols, and do the interactions without installing anything on the on your computer. Uh, making sure that everyone is compatible, whether on Mac, on PC, or uh, on Chrome, or Firefox, or whatever. Okay. Sofian. Yes. We we have comment uh, in the chat about call flows. You know, uh, uh, maybe seeing some of the exercise. You know, from uh, maybe the our intermediate. Uh, maybe it's a good way to show on the intermediate uh, training that there are more call flows. Okay. It's a different approach. So this one is uh, beginner training. It's very user friendly. It's here about getting a lot of explanation about the, the protocol, the standards. Um, and there's another comment uh, from a few people as well about uh, our slicing uh, training. So maybe we can okay. leave it aside for now the open run, but maybe people seem to be more interested yeah, to, yeah. to see these, uh, these two trainings. No problem, yeah. Of course. Uh, so in inside the, uh, the the 5G, as I said before, we have beginner and we have an intermediate level. The beginner is the user friendly side uh, where we have uh, like uh, we explain the, uh, the the challenges in the most user friendly way uh, in order to onboard uh, new engineers, new hires, uh, newcomers to the technology that are reskilling to the field, etc. In the intermediate level. We are trusting you to do more with the technology we provide. What it means is that you have a 5G architecture that is explained and illustrated here, which is uh, inside your lab. And inside this, what we are going to be able to do is to interact with each element one after the other. 
So for instance, here, we are going to interact with the NSSF. So what we do is go to the configuration inside the lab. And inside the lab, we are going to uh, go inside the configuration and change the configurations if you want it. So for example, in the NRF, uh, we explain, of course, uh, briefly what the NRF does. And we give the parameters to change. And when we bootstrap the service right here, we are going to tell you, check on the status and the health status of your 5G core network. And tell me if it works or not. Works or not means look at the logs and see if the configuration you have done so far works or not. From time to time, we're going to include a few, a few challenges for you to solve in order to make it work. For instance, here, we are going to give you a configuration of the NRF to complete on your own. And once that's done, and this error here fixed, the elements will be able to register to, to the NRF. That's one example, right? And in, in order to, to explore more with the technology and create your core network, now it, it's working. What we need now is to register UE and observe the protocol, right? So what we are going to do in challenge registration is we are going to interact with the core network. We are going to start a UE and a GNOTB from the terminal of the lab. And once that's done, we are going to perform a registration and observe inside Wireshark the NGAP protocol. This is one example of the protocol that you are going to observe. And you are going, for example, to see a setup request, a setup response, initial UE message, and the rest of the NAS protocol exchange. Once that's done, you can, uh, you can of course, register your UE and finalize the whole call flow and pick this explanation, brief explanation of the call flow in the protocol and observe it inside Wireshark. So it means you have this reference in mind and now you are going to, to uh, perform few filtering on your Wireshark capture in order to take just the protocol that you are interested in and looking at the parameter that interests you. For example, uh, the ID NAS PDU, the ID run UE, NGIP, et cetera, ID. All of these are going to be uh, analyzed and uh, explained. While doing that on the, um, on the registration, we are also going back to the back office, which is the core network, and try to observe the HTTP2 exchange between the elements. So what we are going to see here is the IMF, how it registers the UE. So we are going to see it interact with the NRF in order to find the SMF, the discovery phase, and then exchange uh, um, with the SMF in order to, to fully uh, uh, register the user and start uh, a PDU session with it in challenge five. So all of these are going to be uh, observed inside the lab. Uh, whatever position you 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 want to observe in your lab, it's fully customizable. It's up to you. Uh, you are going to the, the probe is going to be on all the protocol stack, and whatever you filter on Wireshark, like we are doing here in GAP, HTTP two, uh, and PFCP, we are going to be able to observe the set protocols. The the other example I want to give on this uh, is on the um, on the Open RAN lab. Just to illustrate this, uh, not, not to dive in too much on the Open RAN Lab, but just to explain that on the uh, Open RAN Lab, we have more protocols to explore. For example, the F1 uh, setup uh, uh, protocol in the uh, F1 AP protocol. Uh, we have uh, S1 AP protocol uh, to observe as well. In the user plane uh, and in the slicing, we are going to, uh, to be able to observe E2 AP protocol. Uh, to find the nodes and to observe the protocol uh, which is uh, inside um, between the rig and the elements uh, to uh, to interconnect with uh, CU and DU. So all of these protocols are being observed with Wireshark and then analyzed. TCP dump or Wireshark, of course, uh, both of them available inside the lab, always. And as you can see uh, in the table of content on the right side, you see the different uh, call flows that will be uh, part of our uh, training. So you provisioning, uh, data calls, service request paging, uh, all of these would be able to uh, to be done in, in this particular training.
and analyze in detail with Wireshark and uh, all the traces. And moreover, you can also download them from the lab to your own PC. If you have uh, a course or you have uh, uh, something to do in the lab and you wanted to perform a certain scenario, for example, le let's give an example. Uh, I want my UE to be rejected by the core network. I want the reason to be mentioned and I want to simulate that inside the lab lab lab. So I come up here, I change one parameter in the UE to make the core network rejected. For example, I request a PLMN, which is false. The core network will make the rejection. I will capture everything in Wireshark. I will be able to observe it and download it from lab lab This is possible. And you keep the capture and illustrate it in your courses or in your exchanges or with uh, with your fellow uh, colleagues, etc. So all of this is capable, uh, is is done within lab lab uh, just with, uh, with the standard lab. There is no extra features to pay or anything. Yes, it is just question the, the Wireshark, the pickup file, it can be downloaded locally to your PC. So it just happened that uh, I think, Sofian, you opened the lab, which is not a uh, training, oh, which yeah, is uh, yeah. completed, so we cannot show. But there is a download uh, window so that you can, you, you, you'll be able to download it. Yeah, absolutely. I can illustrate it in another lab. It didn't, <laughs> didn't look really at the... Um... You have the completed one. Uh, something that's not completed. The next page, probably. If you go to the next page, it might be. Yeah. You have the uh, exploring, exploring uh, the third one. Okay. Yeah. So this one. Uh... Ah, cool. Okay. We have too much of that. <laughs> well, it's a demo account, so we have a lot of training on the demo. Yeah. Account, indeed. Absolutely. So uh, we can. Um... We can wait for uh, the, what you are witnessing on the bottom here is that we turn off the instances when you don't use them and we turn them on uh, automatically as you connect. So it means only a few seconds uh, are standing between you and using the lab. Uh, you can connect uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. So it means that uh, whenever you, you connect uh, to to your platform, you are going to be able to, to see uh, this uh, Status change uh, from um, from off to pending to on, and then you can uh, use uh, use your lab and uh, interact with all the challenges. Um, before I forget, there is uh, this uh, chat button right here where you can exchange with uh, with our support, and you can ask them questions about the pedagogy of the technical difficulties that you might have, and. Uh, and this support is here to, to answer any any kind of questions that you might have. So uh, to, to see it uh, live, this is how it looks like from within when you uh, when you um, try and um, connect to the lab and uh, perform a, a, a download uh, of a pickup capture. Let me just refresh one bit. Uh, so uh, on the right hand side before the, the environment is ready uh, on the left, on the right hand side, you have all these captures that you can have. So registration OK, for instance, or registration not OK, uh, the scenario that I uh, explained earlier. So, yeah, just clicking on it uh, will uh, will uh, make it download and open uh, on my machine, just like I did uh, before. And then uh, you can filter for a protocol, and you can see the response, and you can see uh, a successful outcome or not. And uh, you can see uh, the whole uh, protocol items uh, right here explained. So this is uh, one, one example. And of course, uh, the, the environment is here uh, where you are going to find uh, the configuration and all of uh, what you, you need to interact with it uh, in the lab. Uh, uh, so, yes, Karim. Uh, because of the time, because it's already one hour, can, can we see something with, with the cloud flavor, like uh, the slicing on the Teco cloud? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me let me pick uh, one of the labs for slicing uh, for Teco cloud. Is is I think it's an interesting one. And uh, as Karim, uh, you mentioned, that it's uh, really a sign of uh, like uh, of change of uh, our industry that we are going to. Uh, to, to tackle uh, challenges, with, be it from the vendor side or from the operator side, that are include more and more the, uh, the the topic of cloud infrastructure. So uh, what we have here is we have few reminders about the 5G because this is the, the workload that we are going to interact with. We have few um, Kubernetes reminders because you are going to interact with an NFVI. You are going to interact with an NFVO. 
so we need and and that NFVI is a Kubernetes cluster. So in order to do that, we explain first what is uh, the uh, reference architecture from Itsimano for the for hosting the NFVs, and then we explained through a command how you can uh, um, get hold of your uh, NFV deployment using kubectl command if it works or not. And then later on, we are going to create and deploy slices based on different scenarios. So here we are going to uh, create a slice. And this slice will be, um, if I have a summary of this, uh, we have uh, several modes of creating uh, slices. Uh, mode one is uh, where you are uh, having uh, a slice which is composed of the full architecture that is deployed. In the mode two, in slicing creation mode two, you are going to share the core network between the users and separate the UPFs. For instance, this can be uh, applied to industries. Uh, where, um, this applies to industries where you have a uh, user, um, user uh, function for one uh, industry and one for another, just for the user plane. But the core core uh, core network is common, and uh, th for example, I witnessed I myself did some of these deployments. Uh, one for a hospital, for instance, for instance, for a network operator. So what happens is the core network is deported, and we have a fiber that goes until the 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 UPF uh, for the client it, itself, and this means you can have multiple UPFs, one for different clients. Okay. So this is a slice in mode two. And in mode three, you have all the functions that are separated. And all of these, you will be able to do them with using Kubernetes um, manifest deployments with, uh, with YAML, and you can tweak and configure as, uh, as you wish. So the, the, the global view is this of the lab. Uh -huh. Great. So, um... Uh, well, the, the most interesting thing for me that you, you also cover, I mean, you cover the functional aspects of technology, and then you also like demonstrate how this technology is actually being deployed on the cloud. So you, you give some sort of an end-to-end -end exposure to the uh, to whoever looking for such knowledge. Absolutely. We, we, we do a lot of, um, of uh, user research, which means that we talk to professionals such as uh, the, the, the lovely audience that we have today. And uh, we, we, we talked with you guys um, uh, and we, we try to get inspiration from the industry, what happens, actually happens with the technology. And what we bake inside the labs is a reflection of how it is used, the technology, how it is used on the field. So we try to stay on topic. Uh, we try to, to be really relevant. This is the case. And we receive many feedbacks and we try to, to include them uh, on, on the way. For example, um, if you have um, a feedback about uh, pedagogy, I didn't understand this or I didn't understand that. Or for instance, I would have liked to see something about security, then we will make um, an update to the lab to include that, etc. So all of this feedback, we listen to it and we try to iterate on the labs just to, to, be, uh, to be really relevant to the industry and to the community uh, of, uh, of users. Great. Uh, I think we can have like a final round of, of, of questions and then we, we can close. Uh, Sophia. Sure. Um, there are some questions specific about uh, the 5G lab. So Mohammed is asking, is, is the SCP function part of the 5G lab? So this network function, the SCP. So the SCP? Uh, in 5G, and the question was about uh, a CTP. Okay, I no, think uh, a no, CTP no, no, you no, meant, no. Uh, Mohammed. Yeah, I, I mean it's not SCP. It's SCP. I think Mohammed, if you can, uh, yeah, yeah, service communication. Yes. Service communication proxy. Ah, okay. I don't think we cover this. Uh, this. In, in our use case, no. okay. No, no, I don't think we cover it. Here, right? Maybe in the uh, the um, um, I mean in the pedagogy of the lab, but um, 
in practice, I don't think uh, there is network function uh, like this uh, that we covered uh, in our use cases. Okay. Uh, I think it's quite advanced, it's, uh, but it's a good question. It's a very good question. And um, and um, there is also the handover, uh, sorry, not the handover, the, the roaming, uh, which is another example of advanced use cases that um, uh, like the on the VAP, et cetera, protocols, kind of protocols that we reserve for later. Um, when we have a, a, a full request, uh, we can cover it in an advanced level. For now, we have beginner and intermediate. Yeah, there was a question, Sofiane, about some uh, mobility events. So I think this is not called, yeah. but okay, we don't have time, but we have the vendor one. So of course, yes. uh, someone mentioned about, you know, what is possible with free uh, 5GC open 5GS, but that's why we have the vendor as well. We know some of the limitation yes. of what can be on the open source and we work with vendors to have more advanced, uh, but we will not have so maybe time to go into the demo of this uh, vendor lab, but we do cover all the mobility events with another uh, the Amaris of Lab, for, in, for instance. Uh, absolutely, yes. We have uh, we have the uh, the um, the mobility challenge covered in uh, two labs, the Amaris Soft one uh, that um, going uh, that I'm projecting right now uh, with different scenarios, LTE to LTE, uh, NR to NR, etc., uh, and X to handover and such. So this is in the vendor lab, Amaris Soft. And we have also uh, another mobility scenario uh, in uh, in the 4G lab where we do an X2 handover and we have the full handover that you can perform and observe uh, at all the stacks uh, with Wireshark. And in 5G, it was covered uh, really, uh, uh, really soon. Uh, like uh, it was covered uh, like really not very uh, long ago in uh, in SRS run, which is an open source project that we, we work with uh, in 5G. So hopefully soon we are going to be able to cover it as well in the 5G lab, the, the handover scenario. We depend, we do depend on the open source, which is the silver lining of, uh, of having the, the open source technology. Uh, sometimes you don't find all the features that you want to show. So uh, you, you need to, uh, to be patient or to implement it on your own. Another question. I don't know if, Karim, we have time or you, you want to continue or... Because I know you have maybe other other things to cover. Uh, we're happy to continue with the question, but for your own uh, yeah, please, agenda, you can, maybe we can continue with one or two questions and then. Uh, okay. Okay. Write it up. Uh, question, Sofiano, about three uh, GPP releases. Uh, do we support multiple releases? Can we choose uh, today? I think it's only it's a specific release we we implemented. Yes, uh, absolutely. We have uh, we have uh, the uh, release fifteen and release sixteen in the labs. And what we will do? So the question is for the future release. I, we will update accordingly. What uh, this, according to what we see in the in the field, you know, the, the release the request from our customers. So we'll uh, implement that uh, accordingly. Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, is there a final? Question. Uh, Tuan, I think maybe maybe the final question can, can maybe go ahead. Yeah, I can group some of these questions because they are asking about like for example automation, uh, through cloud automation about AI. So can you just give us like an what is your like not roadmap but what are your vision? I mean, what, what are the upcoming training that you are planning to to add? Um, do you want me to cover it, one? Yeah, go ahead. Give, give, give yeah. what we, co we, we have many ideas. <laughs> to we, be we have many ideas, and AI is definitely one of them. We have many use cases that we are considering, uh, like predictive maintenance or um, or um, SLA violation detection, uh, things like that. So uh, all of this root cause analysis, all of these uh, using AI is uh, really something that we, we are looking forward. And we are currently on the process of discovery. It means that a lab is coming soon. Uh, we also have automation with Ansible uh, that is going to be covered and also uh, scripting with Python because this is uh, part of the new skills uh, skill set that is required from uh, today Tilco and Tilco Cloud engineers is to be fluent in Python and to have it uh, applied to different uh, aspects of uh, networking and Tilco technology. So we're trying to provide a lab to accompany that change. Uh, so basically, uh, we are witnessing full on all, all of this transformation in the in the industry and all of these topics that were really for the IT traditionally coming to telco, 
and we are trying to find use cases in telco and apply this technology uh, in order for you uh, to to find where uh, you are uh, you, your comfort zone but with new technologies in order to to express uh, express your skills uh, in this field yeah um thanks a lot sofia and Antoine. really it it okay. has really it has been really a very interesting session uh the, thank you for having us uh, carry everyone uh, Really, Thank you for having us, Karim. Yeah, it's it's great, and thanks for accepting the invitation. Uh, I I hope you don't mind that we meet you one more time at, whenever we are we are closing the uh, the program. Uh, maybe you would like to apply whatever we uh, you know we ask. <laughs> Love, so uh, th that would be great. So of course we would be uh, we'd be happy to join again. Uh, yeah. part of your program if we're happy to help everyone. <laughs> Okay, thanks again. And uh, I know that you give us like a, a demo account to the, with, uh, for us for, for the uh, for the attendees. So uh, we will also assess together how can we how can we, we use that uh, because they're, they're asking about it. But but uh, all in all, really thank you, thanks a lot, and thanks also for uh, accepting to to record the session. This is really uh, something uh, it's wonderful. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Ramadan Karim, happy Ramadan, and uh, see you soon. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank have, you a good, uh, have a good session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, Carlo.